And after three and a half years of tears and sweat, I'm no more a PhD candidate, but I'm a PhD survivor. Phew. Okay, thank you. And since Christmas is just around the corner, and we are talking all about cells today, so I put the title as Sailing into Christmas. Well, so what's a cell? So a cell is the very fundamental unit of life. It starts with one single cell, which together makes a tissue. The tissues together make an organ, like your heart or brain. This makes the organ system, and that makes the organism, like you and me. And of course, her. All of you might know her. And the cell looks very simple, but the actual anatomy of the structure is much more complex than we think. So I will just take you through a lyrical video, and you guys have to join me with the karaoke. Cells, 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 building blocks of life. Cells, 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 building blocks of life. They're in your pet and in your knees, in your tails and on the trees. Cells are in your family. Cells, cells, cells. Most cells have a nucleus, and it runs a show. It's in the center of the cell, and contains the genetic code. The mitochondria are the power plants of the cell. Come on, guys, you can sing the miracle video. Of food and water, they're useful just as well. Cell, 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 building blocks of life. Cell, 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 building blocks of life. They're in your pet and in your dreams. On your toes and in your trees, cells are in your families. Cell, cell, cell. Ribosomes are working hard, making proteins. You have to remember this because we have to talk about it later. bodies, pack them up, ship them on. Just not saying. The endoplasmic reticulum carries proteins carefully. The lysosomes are janitors, clean the cell free. Cell, 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 building blocks of life. Cell, 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 building blocks of life. They're in your pet and in your knees, in your toe and all the trees. Cells are in your families. Cell, cell, cell. Cytoplasm is a gel like stuff that the cell parts are floating in. The cell membrane says what goes out and what comes back in. That's all. Okay. <laughs> well, so thank you, thank you. So that's all how the cell structure looks like. But what does it majorly do? What is the function of the cell? So it's making proteins. These are large macromolecules, which are being made inside the cell. And the production can be compared to a chemical factory, like Bayar, or like playing Legos and putting objects together. It all starts in the nucleus, where the genetic material, DNA, is being transcribed into RNA. This RNA is being sent out of the cell into the cytoplasm of the cell. And the ribosome, which I talked about in the video, I told you to remember, is now being read by the mRNA in the cytoplasm. And then it is being translated, like German to English, let's say. It's being translated into what we called proteins. And the major sources of proteins in our bodies are all shown here. You eat them, you have them. People who go to gym, I'm sure they can recognize this one. Yeah, good. So that's the function of the cells and the proteins. Now, a very major protein that gives shape to your body, the whole body, is actin. And actin, to my belief, is like the James Bond of the cell. There you go, that's actin. And actin basically acts like the cytoskeleton or the skeleton of the cell, like the skeleton in your human body. So, if you do not have a skeleton in your closet, surely you have them in your cells. And that's exactly how a cell cytoskeleton looks like. So the actin is in the form of these rods, the nucleus is right in the center. But okay, jokes apart, when I look under a microscope and try to color all of that with different dyes and stains, it looks exactly like this, a very complex network. Okay, actin, so like James Bond, cannot work alone. It always needs the Bond girls. So actin...
actin also has actin binding proteins. And this one protein is of my interest in my research. It's termed as coronin 7. And it's like the German police. Let's say it's controlling the city, keeping everything in the cell under control. The name coronin comes from the English word crown, or the German word kroner, like that from the grumpy Queen Elizabeth. Or it resembles the name of a beer. OK, I'm a Kölsch fan, but still. But exactly in the cells, how it looks like? The coronin is localized on the cell membrane, like I showed you in the video. But in the coronin 7, uniquely localizes on the Golgi body. Now, like in boxing, where you knock out your opponent, you can also knock out the protein out of the cell. So that means there's something going to happen wrong in the cell because the protein is lacking. OK, the cells are derived from such a mice. You can see boxing in a coronin 7. KO stands for knockout. And that's me working for three and a half years with these mice, terrible ones. Sometimes they are helping you, sometimes they're not in your research. But ironically, my protein shares an Elias name with a beer. And when I'm depressed, I just drink it. <laughs> well, now, the cells are one name, but they can be of many types. They can be in your child, they can be in the dog in your house, or in the orchid plant in your house. And depending on where you isolate the cells from in the body, they have different names and therefore different types. OK, well, we cannot work with a cow in the lab. It doesn't make sense. So we choose these tiny, cute animals, the mice. Now we cut the skin out. We try to remove the hair, the dirty one, and then try to chop it into pieces, put them in a plate with some nutritional media. They try to grow in this plate. When you see the first time under the microscope, they look like these tiny dots. But when they're growing in a day or two, their lifespan is pretty short, they look all like this, a chaotic mess. And they're termed as primary dermal fibroblast only because they're taken from the skin. So dermal word comes from skin. Now the skin is always prone to several wounds. You can get scratches, you can get hurt when you fall. We are not talking about stabbing here. We are not talking about a broken heart here, which is also a wound, actually. It takes time to heal. However, we are talking about such situations where you get hurt on your skin, which we are trying to reciprocate in the mouse model. So we create artificial wounds in the mouse, or take the cells from the mice, and then try to analyze how the wound is healed. So let's study how the wound is being healed in laboratory. As you will go through here, we have the cells. We have a plate here. We take the forceps, the tweezers. We create an artificial wound now. Load, load the cells into the wells inside. You let them grow for 24 hours. An artificial wound of 500 micrometer gap is being prepared in these. Then you remove the culture insert. The wound is intact. Now you put them some media, which is like their food for the cells and start, um, acquis start the acquisition of the image. This is like an artificial situation, a natural situation, let's say. Now, when we start imaging the cells, we put the cells in a perfect environment like it is in our body. We try to Im Im image it under a microscope, and it is analogous to the natural situation where you use these creams and band-aids. We think they are creating the wonders, but actually not. They are triggering the cells with certain signaling molecules, which are actually helping the cells to migrate towards each other and close this wound gap overnight. Well, now, actin and coronin we are talking about cannot work just by themselves. One will be a wanderer, two will be a good company, three will be crowded, but four, like a guest in a party, is much more fun. So when a cell has to move towards a wound, which is signaling it, the Golgi body and the actin cytoskeleton have to be really intact. And they have to face towards the wound to migrate into the wound in a unidirectional manner. OK, I think the audience is still with me. I can continue a bit more. 
And then, so we have the Golgi here. So when the coronin 7 is there, the two other proteins like to maintain the peacefulness of the city with the fire brigade and the ambulance and everybody. We see in a wild type, normal situation, the Golgi is completely intact. However, as soon as the coronin 7 is missing, the Golgi is kind of disrupted. It gets disturbed. But what does it mean in terms of the movement of the cell? Well, all our cells have to follow certain traffic rules, like we follow traffic rules in the city to avoid accidents. When coronin 7 is there, it looks like one here in Germany, very organized. And in the data, it looks like the cells are moving in one direction in a linear fashion. However, when it's not there, it looks like an organized chaos. Uh, I come from India, so I can totally agree to this. That's how it looks when there's extra traffic. And that's how it looks within the cells, where the cells just try to move randomly, but are not able to completely com cure the wound, because they're not moving towards one direction. And therefore, the take-home message is that all the cells in our body are trying to perform their unique functions. All the proteins being produced in the cells have a multitude of functions. And researchers today, like us, are trying to decipher all these functions one by one, not only wound healing, but even other processes. That's me. When I don't work in the lab, I'm posing for selfies with my cells, and the mice are watching me since I'm not working. And that's the end of it. Thank you for being an amazing audience. And thank you. And thanks to... Whoa, thank you. Das war für euch in knapp über 10 Minuten. Just close over Just 10 close. minutes. Yes. Gucci!